And he joins me right now to talk about Unstable, streaming right now on Netflix. He is not only the star, writer, producer, add all the credits in front of his name. He is the one and only John Owen Lowe. John, man, thanks for taking time to talk to us today. Congrats on the show. It's out. How does it feel for it to be out? Uh, it feels very, very, very strange, my friend. Uh, I have been working uh, on or around this concept for over two years, I think. So it's it's very surreal and, and very exciting. And, um, oh, my God, please watch it and like it. And I just start crying. I crumple to the floor, and that's the end of the interview. No, it's it's weird. It's very strange, but I'm very excited. Yeah, I mean, to to put you know your blood, sweat, and tears into it for, like you said, two years, it's one thing to be an actor on set and wait for it to come out and wanting to see what the final product looks like, but you're so much more intimately involved uh, with this, writing on the show, producing the show, uh, coming up with the concept even. I mean, so there's, there's a lot writing on it, John. I mean, I'm sure the pressure is being felt, but there's a lot going on here because it's not you're just not a hired gun on set. This is your baby, right? <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Yes, um, <laughs> I, I, that was. I, I appreciated that. Um, I am going to go cry now. Uh, yes, there's a lot. You know, it's funny. It's a good question. There is a lot riding on it, but as sappy as this sounds, the truth is, I'm fortunate enough to to know that it's very rare uh when oops that uh it's rare when you have a project that you can be proud of across the board and uh truthfully i mean this this is not like interview you know <clears throat> press movie magic this, this is like from the bottom of my heart this project is something i am so deeply proud of i am kind of in shock of what it came to be in the sense that even you know a year ago if you'd asked me what is your highest expectation of the show i genuinely believe the product that we we made is delivered on that um and so it does take the result uh out of it a little bit in the sense of like i get to just be proud of it um at least this is what my therapist tells me to tell myself. And then the facade crumbles and I'm like, ah! um, but no, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm very content with unstable in this short and fleeting moment. Well, you know, I, I was talking to uh, some of your press folks before you joined us and I was said, for there's so much content, right? There's so many streaming services. There's so many channels. There's so much content that's put out every single day. And when I saw the trailer for Unstable, it was one of those few, and I and I mean this sincerely, it was one of those few trailers to where I was like, oh, you know what? I'm definitely going to make a note to go watch that. Like that actually oh, looks wow. interesting. That looks like something that I'd want to watch and 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 invest time in, um, which is which is hard to do. I know I heard in an interview, I think uh, your dad, uh, Rob Lowe, was was discussing how this came about that he was always asked about y'all's relationship and then it led into trying to figure out how to formulate a concept around the dynamic that you have that would be interesting for viewers how did you nail though down this particular concept like for where because he's like a tech billionaire who's a little out there god complex ish yeah. and you're sort of the the person who tries to bring him back down to earth and you know help him with his ways or what have you how did you nail down that particular concept of the of the relationship of the show, I should say. Sure. It's, it's a great question. Um, I think uh, one thing that's always interested me as a writer and as a storyteller is this genre, you know, this comedy of manners genre, which is like poking fun at the uh, uber wealthy, the social elites, you know, those, <clears throat> those types of projects seem to, to resonate right now they're in the zeitgeist look at us you know succession triangle of sadness um you know uh, uh those various uh you know uh projects about the the tech founders who crumbled um but so so i knew that 
that was a milieu or a world I, I I was excited to place a character dynamic similar to Rob and I's in real life in. So it was like, I got to make fun of two things that I very much so loved making fun of originally. At the same time, it was like killing two birds with one stone. So naturally, Rob became an Elon Musk type, uh, you know, insane, charismatic, highly intellectual, but highly unstable uh, individual. And I became his estranged socially awkward uh introverted uh unamused son <laughs> and now we have unstable streaming right now on netflix now i said you're you're not only in the show as one of the leads you wrote on the show producer i have more of a production question for you i guess why did y'all decide on the half hour format i'm always kind of interested why people go half hour for, as opposed to a full hour, I know it's more of a situation sure. of comedy. Traditionally, those are half hours. But was there a particular thing you thought, like, we can really pack a lot of funny into this half hour? Or or what was the idea behind that? I can tell you exactly why. Um, it, it, the truth is, is that um, as creators, the, the three of us, Rob, Victor, and I, and um, Netflix as well, because we had talked to them at length about the structure of the show, <clears throat> We all felt that there was sort of a a um, a missing sort of space in the media uh, world right now that used to be occupied. That sort of uh, mid to late two thousands uh, network comedy lineup genre of like Parks and Rec, The Office, Thirty Rock, even like a few years down the line, go to the good place, whatever it is. Um, Netflix, for sure, they were like, we really would love to, you know, occupy this half hour comedy, sort of lighthearted, feel good, but laugh out loud, funny space. You don't see it that much anymore. And the more research we've done, or the more, I guess, for an easier way to put that time we've spent thinking about it, um, those shows don't exist as much as they used to, if at all anymore. So it was kind of like a love letter, uh, at least the idea to do a half hour comedy is it was, it was a, a, you know, love letter to a, a time in which I missed just like turning NBC on and watching three 30 minute chunks. And in an hour and a half, I had consumed three episodes of my favorite TV shows of all time. Yeah, it is kind of a lost art form, really, when you think about it, or something that's not there anymore. I can remember coming home from school and turn on TBS, and there was the, you know, ha you had Seinfeld for a minute, then you had uh, uh, Not Married with Children, something like that, back to back to back, and it was it was a vibe that you could have in yeah. the afternoons. Isn't it, it, it? I'm telling you, there's something about it, not structure specifically, it's like soul food, but in TV, where you're just like, you know, the stakes aren't going to be astronomically high, but there's also going to be story and there's going to be something that moves you and it's going to make you laugh. And like, that is very calming to me as a viewer. And so I was like, I'd love to make something that has that effect on people. That's like my favorite feeling when I'm watching something. So when you're doing this half hour sitcom, it's single cam, you know, it's when we think of, at least from when I was a kid, um, we're not too far apart in age. You know, I, I normally think of a sitcom traditional at like the three camera with the live studio audience. When you have something yeah. like this, that's a half hour with, with a project that you're so intimately involved with. Um, I always wonder, because so if we go to Seinfeld, just say, I would hear Larry David talk. Hey, we'd be there on shoot night. If the audience didn't respond to a joke, we all take a second. We take a five. We come up with a new joke, film it there. Boom, it works. We're, we're comfortable with what we have. With a format that you're in, you're not sure if the joke's going to hit with the audience yeah. because you don't have that instant feedback. Do you find that yeah. to be, I don't know, difficult to, to navigate through to say, man, I hope people understand this joke. I hope it lands the way that we are intending it to land. So it's a very smart question. Um, you know, I think that, first of all, I would be <clears throat> remiss if I didn't say that the group of writers that we collated to work on this and uh you know 
including our, our co-creator, Victor Fresco, who I, I will credit um, as a, a genius. He's so smart. We created an, a, a safety blanket for where, where we, I mean, we put these scripts and every moment of these scripts. So that every joke, every alt of a joke, every ad lib, everything. It was like every facet of an episode went through like a meat grinder of like of the 10 people viewing this media right now what are 10 opinions and we get eight that were like this is really funny and then two would go i actually think that joke is stronger if you trim it it dies in the last beat and you'd go okay let's talk about that and you would sit there and and re and, and the amount of and again, you have to be careful not to over intellectualize comedy, I think, or, or overthink it. It's like sometimes a moment's a moment and you just got to trust that. And I think that's when you got to go with your gut or trust the people that have been working longer than you. Um, but this is a long way of saying we had so many valuable, smart, amazing people in this process that it almost felt like the audience, we had faith that the audience would echo our collective sentiments after it had been worked through over and over again. That's not to say, by the way, that we didn't um, have various ways of of sort of like crowdsourcing um, what was funny and what was not funny about it. But the last thing I'll say about this, because this is important to this question, is like the live audience format we weren't doing, but we kind of had in a weird way, this is a weird sort of comparison, but I think you understand. The show was born because of the amount of people that commented on how funny Rob and I's dynamic was. So we knew that there was metaphorically a live audience waiting for us to say like, well, you delivered or you did it. So that kind of amped us up and gave us like, an energy to to make this show the best version of itself because we knew there was some version of a demand for it if that now, makes sense. The, no 100 percent, and it, you already knew that the dynamic worked because that's one of the biggest things in casting is uh especially for a series you have to make sure that the dynamic between the leads work well you already knew that you already knew that it was yeah. going to work you have a built-in chemistry that's probably going to be closer than anybody else you could ever imagine um, so that's you exactly knew that right. that part was going to work. So, yeah, I, I totally feel what you're saying. Unstable is streaming right now on Netflix. One of the stars joins us right now. John, um, when when you're putting this show together, we've talked about several different aspects of it. But uh, what I want to hone in on again is the producer side of it, because this show is I'm, I'm telling everybody right now who's listening to this or watching this, wherever it is, stop what you're doing this afternoon, this evening, watch the show, stream it, indulge in it. The show is so funny. You can already tell. Um, I'm hoping we get season two. I hope we get season 20. This is a show that can go, that has legs. You know, it has Brad's legs, my John. <laughs> Brad, we're, but it does. You're my, you're, my, you're my boy now. This I I appreciate that. That, that. that genuinely, no bit. That's very sweet. And I, I, I'm, that makes me feel very happy. Well, I, and I mean it. I mean it sincerely. Um, I, I do have a question, though, because you're talking about you try not to overcomplicate the, the process of comedy. But how does your – because you went to Stanford, correct? I did, yes. And, and, and studied science, is that right? So it's, it's a Stanford-specific major called Science, Technology, and Society. It basically connects the sciences and the humanities. So sort of – Oh, interesting. Okay, I like this. Yeah. Um, so how, how does what you learn at Stanford apply when you're – doing a show like this do you take certain processes or certain things that you've learned and try to apply it into the writing process the producing process or finding your character well geez i love i mean i love that question it's very um makes me think uh i would say on in the most macro sense like the most you know nine thousand miles sort of like answer i could give you is stanford taught me how to be truly collaborative and how to trust that if I'm in a room with five other people, I should believe that those five are smarter than me in many ways. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. And I could work with them because you're surrounded by killers at Stanford. 
And I really do credit that to being in, to being able to like, you know, run with the type of people that were in the unstable writer's room and to hire the people. There's, you got it. First of all, it forces you to take your ego out of it. And, you know, some of these writers we had, whether it was, you know, Victor Fresco, Sean Clemens, who's a guy we brought in from, uh, he worked on The Grinder and Workaholics and, but he's one of my favorite guys. And, and um, you know, we had uh, some people from like the Tina Fey camp and like we had uh, various comedy hitters. And I do credit Stanford as the first place I truly learned that like the first thing you can do if you have a project to demonstrate you truly believe in it is find people that are smarter than you, remove your ego and then go, all right, we're doing this together. I love that answer, man. I love that answer, right? You got to have a trust in the team. That's what they're there for. You got to trust the yeah. team, man, and trust for the sure. process. Sure. Okay. I also will just quickly say that um, – being around the tech world too in Palo Alto was a huge inspiration for Dragon, the company that is an unstable, and for Alice. And I ripped off a lot of stories. I won't talk about them here, but just know that if there's things you hear in there, a lot of those are real things I heard over in Palo Alto. Oh, I'm sure. I'm 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 sure. Um, here's what I want to ask though, and it, we're we're wrapping up this interview, but this is unstable. Um, it's on Netflix right now. Stream all the episodes, stream them, stream them, love them, watch them again and again. Uh, because I, I, I promise they're going to be worth it. But John, when, when, you know, you know, a lot about somebody, I'll put it this way. You know, a lot about somebody when you look at what their what I like to call cultural touchstones are the five mm -hmm. movies or the four shows or the, or the comedy albums that they listen to that create the person that they are today. What are some of your cultural touchstones, I guess, specifically in the movie and TV realm, the things that you grew up watching? Because we're not far apart. I'm a child of the early 90s. I'm a 92 yeah. representer. Um, yeah, so we're, we're not here. Too, I'm 95. We're, we're not too far apart. I'm sure that we have a lot of the same things. For some reason, I like things in the 80s more than anything. I don't know why. But what are your what are your movie and television touchstones? I want to get to know you on a more intimate level, John. I love this. Um I'll start off by saying I tend to stay away from the 80s. It's a, a decade that was dominated by a large-haired uh, egomaniac <laughs> man named uh, Rob that I don't enjoy. Um, <clears throat> but uh, is it okay if I kind of just throw out some of my go, favorite? Go, just go for it. Just, okay. Yeah. So, like, probably Get funky with it. Of, okay, funky with it. Okay, like The Graduate, favorite movie of all time. Um mm. But then I can also kind of flow into a little Usual Suspects was my favorite movie for years. I rewatched that over and over again. Um, uh, um, Harold and Maude, that's kind of a funky one. Great movie. Okay, uh, cool. Classic uh, rom-com always it soothes my soul. So I'll, I'll keep it safe and say When Harry Met Sally, but I'll also go a little more modern and say like Crazy Stupid Love's a great movie you know indulge yourself um tv wise i could go on a rant but i'll just say the mount rushmore for me is always sunny uh curb um this is comedy to mind you uh um i kind of want to put them in this 30 rock parks in the office exist in the same space and i think how many is that four that's four I mean, yeah that's four i mean you can I do you can do you do one more. Uh, I will say Arrested Development. Um, oh, these are great choices. These are great choices. You. You're my kind of person. Thank you, I think you, you're sir. my person. Then, now, if you really want to get in, and I'll end on this, if you really want to know the truth and you break through my facade, what I'm watching right now what is, is exclusively Bravo TV. I use reality television to turn my brain off and melt the world around me. And I am in on some Vanderpump rules drama and uh, don't tell anybody I told you this except everyone that's listening, but yeah, it's between me and you. Okay, cool. Um, that's my, those are my, that's my big list. My dad would be mad if I didn't shout out also like Goodfellas and yeah. um what else did it uh oh i mean like chinatown fantastic movie rosemary's baby uh some random ones like 
you know, Tarantino, you know, Reservoir Dogs, or any Wes Anderson movie I'm a fan of. I I consume. You consume. I, you're a consumer. You're not just a, a producer. Cons- you're a consumer as well. Uh, but guess what? You produce, you wrote on and starred in a great television show that I encourage everyone to stream right now on Netflix, Unstable John Owen Lowe. John, man, thanks for taking the time. Congrats on all your success. Like I want season 30. We're going to get there. I'll, I'll, you have a fan forever in me, and uh, I can't wait to see what you do next. Brad, you're awesome, man. Thank you so much, truly.